comedians in the city. Please give it up for my friend, Shane Anthony, everybody. That man had a very significant effect on me, okay? Because we met when we were very young. Like, we met when we were young, eight years ago. We were trying to change the world. We met at a Bernie Sanders rally, right? So that's where you thought the world changed eight years ago, okay? <laughs> I was smoking so much weed, I'm like, yeah, the banks are too big. That nigga, really <laughs> <laughs> The banks are big as hell, bro. <laughs> so we met at a Bernie Sanders rally trying to change the fucking world. And then all of a sudden, eight years later, I woke up next to Herschel Walker. I didn't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> I was like, nigga, are you a black Republican? They make those? <laughs> I had no idea. I'm gonna be honest with you. I had no idea. And I'm gonna be honest, I have no problem with actually dating a conservative, okay? I feel like I should say that up front. I have no problem with dating conservatives. I just thought you had to be rich. <laughs> I thought that was part of the deal. <laughs> like, nigga, you were broken ignorant. What the fuck? <laughs> I was like, you got a lot of opinions to be driving a Dodge Intrepid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> can't decide what happens in this country. <laughs> so I went through that breakup. <laughs> I'm single now, yeah, I know. We out here, man. I, I could probably find a dude if I just stopped smoking so much weed. Um, cause it just, it clouds you. I've been using weed to cope with my breakup cause I didn't have my female friends to help me through the breakup. Like, you know, that's like a real thing. Like when we break up with you guys, I don't know if you know, but your picture gets sent into a group chat, right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, we, we broke up, I'm so heartbroken. They're like, yeah, bitch, he was musty anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how long have you been smelling him? <laughs> <laughs> they hit you with that shit. You know, the crazy part though is the reason why I had such a tough time getting through this is because I didn't have any female friends anymore. Like I lost them during the pandemic. Because it was a stressful time for the women in this country. It was something sweeping the nation called pregnancy. And it was just, <laughs> it was eliminating y'all one by one. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> where did the Avengers go, right? <laughs> I got a question for the room. Is it messed up that I stopped talking to my friends when they had kids? No, right? That's what I thought, right? See, maybe it's because I learned from my dad. <laughs> We don't talk to bitches with kids. That's very, it's <laughs> an outdated concept. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's fucked up, man. And you know what's even weirder? I want to have an honest conversation with this room, honestly, because I do have something to say. I got something to say. I know, I know. If it goes south, I get the fuck out of here, okay? So, I got to say something. I don't mind, I don't mind when black men date white women. I don't mind. <laughs> I just notice that y'all do it when you get your shit together. And I don't like that. That's some real shit. <laughs> black women get the breadcrumbs, okay? Like, when these black dudes get to these white women, they're not the same person they were. He's a whole new person. Like, when I was with this dude, I had to flush drugs down the toilet. I had to shove shit up my coochie. I had to help this nigga make an album over the phone. <laughs> now you in California with Kate. Nigga, I like Disney World too. <laughs> try a white man before I die. <laughs> Not in this room, but I want to try. <laughs> it's got out of truth. I want to try a white man before I die. I do. But it's got to be like, it's got to, like, it's got to be a white dude that could teach me shit. Because, like, I went on this Tinder date with this one white dude, right? 
And a very nice guy, we met up and everything, and he's driving to the restaurant, and we get pulled over, okay? Naturally. And so, <laughs> we in the car, me and him, the <laughs> we in the car, me and this white dude, and the police comes up, and they tap on the window, and they're like, excuse me, sir, you know, do you know why I stopped you? He's like, yeah, I don't, I, I really don't. And he was like, okay, well, do you mind if I search the car? He was like, go ahead, I have nothing to hide. I was like, nigga, I have something to hide. <laughs> two blunts and an edible in my ass. Like, <laughs> Y'all been fun as fuck, man. Have a great night. I've been Shane Anthony. So a little bit about me, I used to work a lot of retail, but now I'm a ballroom dance instructor. Oh, yeah. I don't get paid as much to cry in the bathroom like I did at Whole Foods. <laughs> That's still pretty cool, pretty cool job. You know, I get to work with a lot of wedding couples like preparing for their first dance and it's such a fulfilling thing to be a part of, you know? It's made me feel so alone. <laughs> 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 Just seeing people in love every day. Every day. I have this one couple specifically that always like in between dancing, they like hug and kiss each other on the forehead. And I'm like, guys, I know you pay me to teach you how to dance, but I will pay one of you to kiss me on the forehead, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, you know? I have this other couple too. It was like their very first lesson. So I was asking them questions about their wedding. I was like, oh, like, is it here in Chicago? And they're like, oh no, it's in Italy. I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. Like, do you have family out there? And the bride was like, oh yeah, my whole family lives out there. I moved here for work, but I stayed for love. <laughs> so I called immigration the other day. <laughs> she came in on Thursday and was like, I'm having visa issues. I was like, what? <laughs> what? That's crazy. Your fiance and I will have to dance alone when you're overseas? <laughs> what if you don't come back? <laughs> forehead kisses for me, that's all I know. All right, forehead kisses. Remember when forehead kisses used to mean something? <laughs> now people are just giving them out. <laughs> You know, I was hooking up with this guy a while ago for the first time. And when we woke up the next morning, he kissed me on the forehead. And I was like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> are we <laughs> in love? <laughs> like, what is going on here? Do you have a toothbrush at my place? It's crazy. I think we need like hookup culture etiquette, right? Like, if you aren't serious about someone, no forehead kisses, no hand kisses, no bunny kisses? What? <laughs> if we're rubbing our noses together, you're meeting my parents. <laughs> okay, if you're intentionally putting your nostrils close to mine, we better be figuring out our Christmas plans. <laughs> okay, buddy boy. Ugh. That's fun, dating's fun. You know what I learned while dating? There's a lot of things that men can say to women, but if we said the same thing to men, they'd be offended, right? Like the other day, I had a guy tell me he wishes I was taller. <laughs> I was like, sounds like someone's projecting. <laughs> Mr. 5'4", are you sure that's... <laughs> If you aren't laughing, you're a short keen. Shout out short keens. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. You know, but you can never ask a guy, like, wow, is your hair naturally that thin? <laughs> 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 the breeze just catches it, you know? <laughs> so aerodynamic, wow. You can never tell a guy either, like, wow, you have really 
nice boobs. <laughs> <laughs> he just wouldn't take it well. He wouldn't. Believe me, I've tried. Okay, I've tried. I had a guy tell me I had nice boobs once. I was like, these? <laughs> these? <laughs> these 34 A's? <laughs> You mean my pectorals? <laughs> <laughs> like you're choosing to compliment the most masculine part of my body. <laughs> <laughs> he was really into them though, okay? He was really into them. He has a boyfriend now. But he was all about them, let me tell you. All the time. You know, it's funny, actually, the same guy one time, he asked me what I would do if a zombie apocalypse happened. And I was like, dude, I don't know. I don't know if I'd survive, you know? I'm not the smartest, I'm not the strongest, but I was anorexic for three years. <laughs> so if there's a food shortage. My body is trained for this. I can live off of nothing for years. Still run laps around you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's okay to laugh, I eat now, guys. I eat now. <laughs> it's funny though, eating disorders are interesting because once you recover from them, it's basically like you go through puberty all over again. You know, like my sex drive came back, my boobs came back, Kind of, we've been over this one. <laughs> the thing I was most excited for though was when my period came back, I was like, thank God. I thought I was pregnant these last three years. <laughs> Got that abortion for nothing, you know? <laughs> All five of them. <laughs> All five of them. No, on a lighter note, guys, um, like my period has been the past three years. <laughs> um, it's my one year anniversary. Give it up for me, one year anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Not since my abortion, no. Um, <laughs> quite the opposite. One year since getting laid. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it takes one year for the earth to rotate around the sun, but I haven't been rotated once in any way, any direction this past year. You know, I think by default, I'm a gamer now. <laughs> I think that's how it works. A PlayStation like showed up at my apartment yesterday and I knew how to play Call of Duty. <laughs> it was really weird. You know, I can't come now unless my gamer headset is on and someone just screaming from the other end that my mom's a whore. <laughs> it's the only way. It's my mom's favorite joke, by the way. It's my mom's. <laughs> favorite joke. It's funny though, after going one year without having sex, now whenever I have to sneeze, like I'm on the verge of sneezing, like it's right there, and then the feeling goes away, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what it's like to have sex with a man. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't even want to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Just here for the build up. I really like the build up. <laughs> A release, not for me. Not for this girl, no thank you. You know, maybe I haven't had a good sex life because I never really got a sex talk. Did any of us get a sex talk in here? Yes? No? Okay, we all sound sad and <laughs> like we've had traumatic experiences. <laughs> I get you. No, my parents never gave my sister and I like a formal sex talk. Their version of a sex talk was every Monday night, we get together, put on ABC Family, what? <laughs> and we'd watch The Secret Life of the American Teenager together. <laughs> now, if you've never seen that show, it's about a 15-year-old girl, she gets pregnant, the show follows her life, and at the end of every episode, my parents would just stop and be like, so, <laughs> any questions? <laughs> Any questions? I'm like, no, mom, I think I get it, okay? If I go to band camp, I will have sex. 
I will get pregnant, and I will become the school slut. All right, but the show gives you a loophole. Okay, if you're religious, you can still do butt stuff and not get slut shamed. <laughs> so I've been Catholic for about 10 years now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you. Our Father. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you guys with this question, question for everyone. Um, do you ever feel like you miss someone? But then you masturbate and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Been fun. I'm Ali Soroka. <laughs>
<laughs> you know? Like, could you imagine wrecking your body and then it's ugly? <laughs> That just feels like a waste. <laughs> and people lie to you. They lie to you when you have an ugly baby. They do. My manager, my manager at work, he has this little girl and she is busted. <laughs> okay? She's busted. And we tell him that she's cute. <laughs> you all know who Ice T is, right? Rapper, actor on Law and Order SVU. Have we seen his little girl? Some of you have, but no one says that Ice T's little girl is ugly. They just say, oh my God, she looks just like Ice T. <laughs> It's tragic. <laughs> I really won't be having kids anytime soon, though, because I am horrifically single. Is anyone else in the room horrifically single? Yeah. All right. Me and five excited other people. <laughs> We've got this. We've got this. I think I struggle a lot with dating and finding somebody because I'm really, really picky about who I date. I'm super picky. But the problem is, is that I'm picky in the way that children are picky about what they eat. <laughs> I date straight chicken tenders and french fries. That's, <laughs> that's my type. They're greasy. <laughs> cheap. <laughs> they fill you up, but they don't satisfy you. That's just... <laughs> it's tough out here. It's tough. But I decided, I decided to go back on dating apps. All right? And people give dating apps a lot of shit, but I love dating on dating apps because men will say whatever they want to you. <laughs> and if you're not laughing, you're guilty. <laughs> okay. I had a guy message me the other day. He was like, what's up, big titties? <laughs> I was like, who raised you? I'm gonna show your mother this message. <laughs> What'd she think? I had another guy message me. He was like, I would hide all the chairs in the world just so you would sit on my face. <laughs> <laughs> and like, how do you say no to that? <laughs> I went over to that man's house. I crushed him. <laughs> I did. I did. I gave that man a bloody nose. <laughs> but my favorite message that I've ever gotten on a dating app was this guy messaged me and he was like, you exude sex. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> he was like, you exude sex. Well, while he's messaging me, you exude sex, I'm taking a shit. <laughs> I like to do most of my dating app dating on the toilet. I like to call it swiping and wiping. <laughs> it's a good time. good time. But I did go on a first date the other day, and it went really, really well. He took me to a steakhouse, which was fancy. And we went back to his place and we started hooking up and I had to stop him and I was like, hey, just to warn you, I am on my period. And he was like, oh, that's okay. I just won't go down on you. <laughs> and I was like, didn't you just eat a rare steak? 
<laughs> he cut into that steak. He's like, I want it mooing. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, she purrs. <laughs> There is this one guy I hook up with, though. I'm on the dating apps, but I do hook up with him. And he's nice and all, but the only problem is is that he doesn't have that big of a dick, which that wouldn't be an issue, except he acts like his dick is big. <laughs> okay? So we'll be hooking up, and he's like, yeah! Can you take this? Can you take all this? And I'm there like, I have had tampons shoved farther inside of me. <laughs> but being single is rough, though, because I have to suck so much dick. <laughs> I, I suck so much dick. At this point, it's another food group. <laughs> but when I was in college, I was with my coworkers, and we're all talking about blowjobs. And my one coworker, she's so judgy, and she was like, ugh, you suck dick. <laughs> That's degrading. I'm like, we work at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> like, realistically, how much lower are we gonna get? <laughs> you guys have been a lot of fun, I'm Nina. Give it up for this next comedian, and very funny, give it up for Grace Piotrowski. Hello, how are we doing? I'm not doing well. Anyone else here have seasonal depression? Anyone else have regular depression? And get a little annoyed at the people who get to like hop on your mental illness when it's trending? And then they just go live the rest of their life. <laughs> like, I get it, compared to someone with perfect mental health, oh, you're so sad. <laughs> but if you've never had a full mental breakdown at a Cubs game, or like killed the vibe at a 4th of July barbecue, I don't want to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> All right? It's like those people who say they went to college in Chicago, and then you find out they went to Northwestern. Like, your purple line struggles are not the same, babe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not doing well. I know that I'm not doing well because my porn searches have changed. Because <laughs> you look up what you fantasize about, right? And I used to masturbate to the Fifty Shades of Grey movie because I wanted someone who was rich and hot to fuck me and buy me things. And now, I masturbate to the prolonged eye contact scene from Bridgerton. Because I would give anything for a medium ugly man to look at me. <laughs> Not doing well, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I just went through a breakup recently, which is what comedians do when we run out of new material. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We broke up for a lot of reasons, one being it was a long distance relationship. I live here, I live in Lakeview, and he lived down in South Shore on 83rd Street. <laughs> Those of you not laughing don't have your Tinder radius <laughs> up beyond three miles, and it shows. <laughs> all right, love conquers all, not always the red line. <laughs> <laughs> It'd also be difficult because then when he wanted to sleep over, he had a hard time falling asleep at my place because I listened to a lot of white noise. By which I mean I open my window on Halstead. <laughs> Listen to the girls and the gays drunkenly singing Taylor Swift. <laughs> I'm allowed to make that joke. I am bisexual like almost every other female comedian you've ever seen. I don't think that all bisexual women go into comedy. I do think all women in comedy end up at least a little bit gay after spending this much time with straight men. <laughs> Um, breakups are <laughs> hard. Uh, last time I went through a breakup, I went through a bit of a dry spell afterwards, and that can be dangerous because when men don't have sex for a while, they like become school shooters. 
<laughs> when I don't have sex for a while, I just got really good at throwing popcorn in the air and catching it with my mouth. <laughs> I broke that last dry spell by hooking up with a buddy of mine, which I shouldn't have done because you ever hook up with someone and it's so bad you don't even update the list on your notes app? <laughs> <laughs> it was like that. So better luck to me this time, right? <laughs> I came around an Uber and I, my Uber was a Tesla, which I have a strong uh, disagreement with because my Uber driver's car payment should not be more than my rent. That's my, my hot take. I don't, I should be embarrassed that I'm letting someone drive me with a check engine light a distance I could very easily walk if I had better time management. <laughs> I don't want to be embarrassed that I can't get into the car. <laughs> Those of you who are poor or have better time management, I'll explain this to you to bring you in on it. Tesla doors <laughs> don't have a handle on the outside. You have to push it in for the car door to open. Door handles have been working perfectly well <laughs> for hundreds of years. And Elon Musk wanting to get rid of them. And then he did it. Elon Musk could have gotten rid of anything. Poverty student debt, homelessness, and he settled on car door handles. <laughs> That's the only reason I don't like him. Uh, so I am the, the planner, I'm the Uber getter. I, uh, the group chats are hard though when you're organizing people, especially the bachelorette ones. Have we ever been to a bachelorette party? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's about the reaction you should have to that. <laughs> for those of you who have never been, a bachelorette party is when you go to Nashville for 48 hours with a girl you went to college with, who since college has made her entire personality that she's only sucking one dick for the rest of her life. <laughs> and you get to decide in that time period if you envy her for like finding the love of her life or pity her for the love of her life being Mark from Naperville who works in sales. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, the last bachelorette I was in, it was the first time I was ever in a wedding party. And while it was one of the worst experiences of my entire life, I'm a glass half full kind of gal. <laughs> and I did learn a couple things. So I now know what an A-line dress is. I know what flutter sleeves are. I even know new definitions for vocab I had. For example, the word optional in the context of a wedding means 110% mandatory or the bride's mom will call you. This is why we shouldn't pick up phone calls from numbers we don't know, all right, ladies? Uh, I, you guys pulled back. You're like, that's not very feminist of her. You know what? <laughs> I make 80 cents on the dollar. It wasn't very feminist to have to pay $1,200 for your wedding. Um, I, I will say, I am, I am a feminist. I don't want get you to get the wrong impression. I don't love, though, our current girl boss narrative that in order for me to be a good feminist, I need to be having feminist sex, meaning that the woman comes every time. Because to me, sex is like a group project, and I know my role. I'm going to go home and do everything by myself. <laughs> because I will do it better and faster than you. And then we can show up and you can do your little performance. <laughs> and I get an A and you get an A and we're all happy. I don't need to like go to your mom's basement so we can pretend to collaborate while you act like you've done the reading, all right? My name is Grace Piotrowski. Thank you, guys. I'm feeling good. You feeling good tonight? I'm feeling good, feeling hot. Yes, yes. I'm wearing my moon belt. 
wear my moon belts, which means after this I will ascend into the sky, so get ready for that. <laughs> uh, I do, uh, whenever, before I start my set, I do like to get to know the audience, I like to figure out the vibe, I like to see what demographic I'm working with, so uh, let me know. Uh, in high school, did you guys have sex, or did you collect state quarters? Which one is it? State quarters! <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, Jeff in the front's like, fuck yeah, collecting Nebraska. I have six of those at home. <laughs> Hell yeah, hey man, me too. I collected state quarters uh, because here's the thing in high school, if I had the option between losing my virginity and like finding Virginia, <laughs> I'm gonna choose the East Coast option, okay? <laughs> I, uh, that being said, I was a youth group kid. That's not painfully obvious. <laughs> Any other children of God in here? Yeah, Jeff. Yeah. God, it's like I'm looking in a, in a, in a mirror. <laughs> I was a youth group kid, but I was really annoying about it. I would always say things like, I'm saving myself for marriage. <laughs> but then I would go home and like aggressively dry hump the corners of my couch. <laughs> Just to feel like something, okay? Okay, is there any other sexually frustrated youth group kids in here? Anybody yeah. else? Yeah. Jeff, I know. <laughs> Jeff, I know. We're the same, okay? <laughs> We're, we're both got K-Love going on in, in our cars, and we're just like, yeah, how great is our God, okay? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't, I was an annoying youth group kid. I was an annoying youth group kid. When my, when my friends did tell me that they lost their virginities, though, in high school, my response back to them would be to openly cry <laughs> in front of them, okay? Which also means that I was, say it with me, not invited to parties, okay? <laughs> Yeah, nobody wanted to invite the girl who uh, went to second base with an ottoman to their party, so. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like, oh my God, that poor girl. She like was fingered by a lazy boy. Okay, maybe. And I had a great time, okay. <laughs> Pro camel toe. <laughs> oh man, I, um, that being said, I am single. Yeah. <laughs> Is that obvious? <laughs> I am single, so is Jeff. Uh, I am single. I, I did run into my ex, though, like a few weeks ago, which was really awkward and jarring because the thing is, when you run into your ex, you never look good, right? Right? You never look good. That's never the day that you, like, shower and wax your upper lip. That's always the day that you leave the house and you're like, I think I'm going to try natural deodorant today. It's like, no, never try natural deodorant. It doesn't work. That's my platform, in case you were wondering. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I did run into my ex, but what was worse, though, was what I was wearing. Because I wish I was making this up. I was wearing his sweatpants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he noticed. He was like, I thought you said that you lost those. And I was like, well, <laughs> you lost my heart. So I really think, I think that's a fair trade, you know? I was wearing his sweatpants. My hair was pulled back so tight, I looked like Tony Soprano. <laughs> And I was wearing a t-shirt that said, Daddy's Little Socialist. So, <laughs> that was the portrait of a perfect woman, as you can imagine. <laughs> I am single, it's fun. Um, <laughs> I, did, uh, I do tend to attract a lot of, of men that say some kind of crazy things to me. I don't know what it is about me. Men tend to say things that make me wonder, like, did this go through a filter? Like, where's the Brita, you know? I love seeing that joke when I can clearly see some men in the audience that look like they own a Brita, but have like never once changed the filter. <laughs> Jeff's like, yeah, man, I love iron, you know? <laughs> I, uh, I've had some guys that some really crazy things to me. I one time went on a date with a guy. He, he was so oblivious to like female hygiene products. And that's important to know because on the date we were eating wings and he thought he was taking a moist towelette out of my purse when in fact it was a Summer's Eve cleansing cloth. <laughs> For my Brita boys in the crowd, a Summer's Eve cleansing cloth is, is not a moist towelette like meant to wipe away loose sauces. <laughs> That's not what it is. It is in fact, it's a vaginal cleansing wipe and it's meant to like refresh in one's vagine. And um, he did use it on his face. He did. <laughs> Which actually ended up being okay because when we were making out later, the pH balance of his lips was perfect. <laughs> I was like, that's it, springtime in Paris? What is that? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, speaking of fem uh, feminine hygiene products, uh, ladies, let me know if this has happened to you. But this I realized the other day that I had two tampons inside of me. <laughs> and, uh, okay, well, for the men in the crowd, that's one more tampon than what's supposed to be inside you. <laughs> 
okay? I just forgot it was up there and never let the drain, you know? And here's the thing. The thing that was the most upsetting up to me was not the fact that I could have gotten, like, toxic shock syndrome and, like, lost a leg, you know? No, uh, the most upsetting thing about it was the fact that I did not realize that I was a two-car garage kind of gal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and they were super tampons, too, so... It wasn't like I was parking two Honda Civics up there, okay? <laughs> I had two Ford F-150s, right? <laughs> Workhorses. <laughs> at two tampons. At that point, it was like I was playing my own little personal game of Chubby Bunny, okay? <laughs> <laughs> How many can she fit, you know? <laughs> Six. Six is the answer. <laughs> Uh, this is this is the educational segment of, of my set. Uh, I, I do like to ask someone in the crowd, a man, you, sir, uh, do you, you have a man bun, so I'm, I'm confident you'll answer this correctly. Uh, do you know why there are different sized tampons? Yes. Okay, well, why? <laughs> everyone's different and there's flows. Every, everyone's, everyone's different and there's different flows. <laughs> Honestly, that's the, probably the closest answer I've ever gotten, and I'm horny as hell right now. So. <laughs> I am soaking wet, and it's not from menstrual blood. <laughs> but I, I've asked that question so many times, and 90% of the times, the guy's answers are, uh, different size vaginas. <laughs> Which, like, man, this is not a cold dressing room, okay? <laughs> I'm like, can I get a medium? No. <laughs> God, I, uh, I am bisexual, obviously, if you can't tell by this button up. I am bisexual, which means I am attracted to both women, uh, and then Alan Rickman specifically, so I'm really, I'm really whatever that is, I guess. But actually, I've been more open about it lately, and I've, I've uh, had some friends and family reach out to me and be, like, surprised to hear it, which is shocking for me because uh, I don't know about you guys, but you don't wear business casual your entire childhood and then come out just an ally. <laughs> Like, I didn't choose to be queer, but I did choose to wear JCPenney button-downs that had slim-fit technology. <laughs> it's like, is that a 12-year-old or is she working accounts receivables? We don't know. <laughs> is that a Blackberry or a Tamagotchi? Which is it, okay? Which is it? <laughs> I, I do kind of have a controversial opinion. I am, I am a firm believer that all women are, like, a little gay, you know? Especially straight women, okay? You give a straight woman two glasses of rosé, what's her favorite activity? What is it? What Kissing is it? her friends. Kissing her friends. She has made out with every single one of her friends named Hannah. <laughs> She's absolutely right. Kissing her straight women love kissing their friends. And whenever I say that, like half of the straight women in the room, like clench their buttholes. And they're like, Katie, kissing your friends is not gay, okay? Me and my besties do it most nights of the week, all right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I kiss my friends hello and I finger them goodbye. And I'm straight as an arrow, okay? Miss <laughs> Katie King, thank you so much. First comedian, very funny, Adam Quaslo. I uh, I'm ashamed of who I was when I was in high school, and we all should be. Uh, <laughs> if you're proud of anything you did when you were 15, there's a clearly marked exit back there. Right? <laughs> like, there's that woman Malala who won a Nobel Peace Prize when she was 15, and if it is not in the trash right now. I will fight her. Because when I was 15, I wore t-shirts exclusively from Hot Topic. Yes. Yes, some of y'all know, in order to get those shirts, I had to drag my dad to a store meant for people who hate their dad. <laughs> some of y'all still do. I, uh... And I was upset about not getting dates when I was in high school. Now that I'm an adult, I understand why women wouldn't go out with me. It's because no woman should. <laughs> I had a Simpsons-themed bar mitzvah. <laughs> I have to die alone. <laughs> we called it a Bart mitzvah. <laughs> yeah. Any woman who fucks me should have to pay higher taxes. 
I was a theater kid in high school, which is a mistake. Uh, if your child does musical theater, you have failed as a parent. That's how that works. Like, everyone's worried that their kid's going to grow up and do sex work. That's, that's good money if you can get somebody to pay for it. What you should be worried about is your kid singing about how many minutes there are in a year. Because <laughs> that's always a cry for help, right? Yes. As I mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm Jewish, clearly, right? Like, my shadow circumcised. Uh, so... <laughs> it has been real fun lately hearing all of your super interesting takes on what institutions you think we run. Uh, we... We don't run the banks. If we did, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd, I'd be on a yacht not doing cocaine because I have a bad sinus, all right? <laughs> we do, of all, there's four major U.S. banks. One of them has a Jewish CEO, Wells Fargo. We don't run that bank. Charles does, all right? In case you're confused by the idea that one person is not his whole race, the CEO of Bank of America is Greek, and that's a group of people famous for not knowing how to run a fucking bank, all right? <laughs> you want to know why Jews tend to be well off financially? I'll tell you the secret. It's because none of us have ever been healthy. So we've all inherited something, all right? My dad had an uncle who didn't have children of his own, and that's why I don't have student loans, all right? <laughs> Have you ever met somebody under the age of 30 who needed a colonoscopy? Because I have their bar mitzvah t-shirt. I do. Find me a Jew with four living grandparents, and I will show you a baby that still has the Band-Aid on its dick. All right? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Jew, we're circumcised. We don't get circumcised at a hospital like the normals, right? We get circumcised at a ceremony. <laughs> It's true. Your parents invite all of their friends and relatives to come watch an infant have outpatient surgery, right? <laughs> and it's very important in Judaism, which is a religion where you're not allowed to get a piercing, you're not allowed to get a tattoo, you're not allowed to modify the body that God gave you, except for this one part. Uh, he made you in his image. He just did not have time to sand it down. Uh, <laughs> People think we run the media? Bullshit. If Jews run the media, why does every TV show have a Christmas special? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, my entire life, I've seen one Hanukkah special, and it was the fucking Rugrats, all right? <laughs> <laughs> we barely control cartoon baby media. <laughs> I'm a comedian. I want to be famous. I think everybody wants to be famous. We just want different levels of fame. Right? Like, I want to be Joey Fatone famous. Because people know who he is, but nobody gives a shit about his personal life. <laughs> like, Ariana Grande once licked a donut, and it was front page news. If Joey Fatone burns down a hospital, it's, oh, that's what he's been up to. <laughs> but we like him, right? Like, I'd love to get a picture with Joey Fatone as long as we're already in the same building. Yeah. <laughs> and look, I know as, as I get older, right, NSYNC passes people by. So to give you an idea in case you don't know the name, from the band NSYNC, Justin Timberlake became the superstar and Joey Fatone became the guy who doesn't have to leave this billiards bar alone. Like, that's the level. You know what I love about him? He is a professional singer who is in the biggest group in the world for five years. And there is not a single person in this room who knows what his voice sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> That's special. I, uh, I've been trying to lose weight recently. I don't want to get crazy with it. I just want to get to the point where I don't have to cancel an Uber just because it's a Honda Civic, right? <laughs> <laughs> And over the pandemic, I did lose 100 pounds. Uh, yeah, thank you. I gained it all back. So, uh, <laughs> so I am no longer allowed to shit on people who get back with their exes. Because uh, I was the one lying in bed like, I miss having to brace myself for stairs. Like, 
I was swimming through old pictures where I hate the way I look. Like, I miss us. <laughs> but I had to do it at the time, right? I was too fat to jerk off properly. <laughs> I had to put my hand in a claw. Like I was grabbing a pickle. <laughs> like I was grabbing a pickle out of a jar. And I had to come at it from the front. Like I was putting a cap on a leaking pen. <laughs> and you know, you're jerking off weird, but it would make more sense with a hand puppet, right? <laughs> they put the Muppet Channel on Disney Plus. I had to stop watching it. <laughs> Miss Piggy was looking a little bit too good. Like it's like, some guy's fitness goal is to run a mile or do a chin-up. Mine was to hold my dick in the palm of my hand. <laughs> it's not even my worst fat story. Uh, one time... <laughs> one time I was at Target. And, and they had a... Yeah, it's... That's what fat people do. We go to Target. And they had a bunch of Batman onesies on sale. And I was like, ooh, that's something you try on before you buy it. <laughs> and if you're wondering why I was looking to buy a Batman onesie, uh, it's because I didn't own one, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I take it in the changing rooms. I get my feet through the feet holes. I get my arms through the arm holes. I go to zip it up. It won't zip. Guys, I was too fat to fit in a Batman onesie. Went to take it off, couldn't get it back over my shoulders because it turns out I was also too fat to get out of a Batman onesie. <laughs> and I don't know if you know what rock bottom feels like, but it feels a lot like having to call for help because you're stuck in a Batman onesie. <laughs> let, let me ask something. How long would you have to be stuck in a Batman onesie before you call for help? 35 minutes. 35 minutes. <laughs> My answer was... My answer was any period of time. <laughs> <laughs> so the woman working in the change rooms comes over and she says, what's wrong? I said, I'm stuck in this Batman onesie. And she says, have you tried taking it off? As if I thought it would just melt off of my body once it determined I wasn't worthy of being Batman. <laughs> Although I'm thinking of going back and trying it now. I think now it might fit. Because now both my parents are dead. And that's the price you have to pay to be Batman. <laughs> you guys know Cast of the Friendly Ghost? The children's character? Yeah, so a few years ago, the company that makes Casper realized that it is kind of fucked up that their big character is a dead kid. I agree. So they announced that Casper was born a ghost. And I'm a lot more comfortable knowing that he's just a miscarriage. As <laughs> <laughs> like, I was all worried about that family mourning the loss of their friendly son. <laughs> Turns out they never even met him. <laughs> I'm out of that time. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> So, welcome to my auntie's basement and shit. Like, this is the dopest shit ever. Like, it's a picture of me right there in the corner on the wall. And everybody look back. <laughs> no, this is a dope setup. Somebody left a prom chair in here and shit. I've been looking at this the whole time. I've been waiting for three hours just to sit in this motherfucker. This shit is dope, man. Y'all a lovely crowd, man. Appreciate y'all coming out. Make some noise for y'all, so. All right, so let's get into it. Before Jamal caught me up, I probably did like the blackest shit ever. I had a real black nigga moment. Like I was eating a whole chicken wing before he caught me up here, and I was struggling to like drop the wing and then come up here on stage. I'm like, oh shit, he called me home. 
<laughs> Hold on, he calling my name. <laughs> no, man, for real. Um, for those that don't know about me, uh, I am a Navy veteran. I did uh, 14 years in the Navy. Appreciate it. Um, and I've been to some sp scary places. I've been to Iraq. I've been to Afghanistan, right? Um, and I've only been home a couple years. And the scariest shit I've done lately is drive through Gary, Indiana. Like, have y'all been to this fucking place? Like, it's wild as hell in Gary, Indiana. Like, that shit is crazy. Like, nothing works in Gary. Like, not a stop sign, a stop light, nothing. Like, my Uber driver was from Gary. He didn't want to bring me up here. He was too busy telling me about bitches and shit. Like, yeah, my baby mama's sister do this thing with a mouth and shit. I'm like, why do you know this? <laughs> and, like, I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan. And so I drove past Gary and saw the house he grew up in. They used to have like this big monumental statue in front of the Jackson house. I drove past that the other day. Niggas just stole the statue from in front of the Jackson house. Like it's no longer there. And that shit threw me off because I'm like, how the fuck y'all still the king of pop and nobody notices this shit. Like y'all just walking around with Michael Jackson ass on y'all shoulder and shit. Like, ooh, what's that? Yeah, this Mike ass. We're going to put him underneath the Christmas tree. Set this nigga down. She's insane, man. 39 years old and I'm dating, man. Single people make some noise. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Couples make some noise. Yeah. So cool. so Fuck you guys. <laughs> nah, man, it's, it's hard when you single and dating, man. I'm 39. And like the last relationship I was in, I just found out I was a side nigga for two years. Like I thought I was in a whole relationship. Called her, tried to be on some boyfriend type shit. She cut me off bogus, like, oh, mm. I'm like, hey, babe, how you doing? Mm, cut that bass shit out. She's like, you ain't the number one. You the number two. Oh, player two ass nigga. That's all you're going to ever be is player two. Ain't nobody checking for you, Luigi. I was like, shit. <laughs> like, damn, out of all the player two niggas I got to be, I got to be Luigi? Like, nobody like Luigi. Like, y'all remember playing with Luigi? Luigi's feet didn't even fucking work when he jumped. Y'all remember that shit? Every time you jump with Luigi, he did some shit like this with his feet. And that shit made me mad as hell, because, like, now I'm at home like, shit. Oh, my God. I ain't Luigi. I ain't Luigi. <laughs> shit is insane. It's so hard, man. And, like, women have, like, super sex drives now, like, Y'all sex drives are like super high right now. Like y'all be making vibrators tap out their little rolls and shit. And it's like, what the fuck is a man supposed to do? Show up and give y'all a sandwich or something? You know what I'm saying? Show us y'all a smile. Like I dated a girl with a, a high sex drive. Man, that shit drains you. It drains your life force. My man, it drains your life force. Like I was never this light skinned before. It drains <laughs> your fucking life force. Like, she fucked me so good one time. I, I just had to play dead on her ass with it. She's like, you sleep? Like, yeah, bitch, dead to sleep. <laughs> shit is insane, man. All the shit I was talking about being in the Navy, man. And I appreciate y'all clapping because I get that. I'm like, oh, thank you for your service. And, you know, all this uh, stuff that I really appreciate. But I also get those super patriotic people that, like, never serve shit but talk like they have, like, oh, for America, you, oh, for America, my brother, my sister, they fighting for the flag. You know, don't kneel for the flag, we represent you. And I'm like, do you really know why a lot of people join the military? Like, I don't think you know. Because <laughs> some of these people, because they was like, oh, Brittany Griner, she get out, but what about that Marine? That Marine was a piece of shit. So <laughs> it's like, I, I when I was in it in 14 years, I asked the nigga why he joined the military. I'm like, yo, so why did you sign up? He looked around and was like, I heard it was bitches in here. <laughs> <laughs> so be mindful for that when people be like, oh, America, you certain it? They just might just be here for the bitches. Like, that's, that's pretty much why I joined the military. It was like mad bitches in there. It's great. I dated a little female. She was on a, uh, the All-Navy basketball team. It was great. Could hoop her ass off. Except she didn't know how to turn the hooping off. We was having sex and shit. Like, everything was basketball. Like, she was on top of me, riding me and shit. And as soon as she came, she was like, ooh, ooh. And then she slapped the, the headboard and was like, ooh, 
buckets. What the fuck? Like, did this bitch just dunk on me? Like, just what just happened? I'm like, get off me, ma'am. Nothing to be part of your triple double. She hit me on the ass and was like, and one. I was like, what the fuck? The fuck is happening up here, man? Talk about dating a lot, man, because uh, I love the dating scene. It's so weird now because people are like socially awkward. This shit just make you. I just love talking about this shit. I did learn some shit about couples. For all the couples in here, so women do this thing when they're ready to fuck, and I learned it, and I call it the slut out move, right? And I call it the slut out move because when you're sitting with your person, y'all sitting like this, right? Y'all sitting real intimate, and women, when they're ready to fuck, they put their hand on their man's thigh right here, right? Then y'all rub. Y'all see this? She looking real intense, like, yes. <laughs> She's like, I started that move. <laughs> <laughs> And so they put their hand right here, and I call it the slut out move because when they really ready to fuck, they move to the inside of the thigh and, and, and rub right here. And fellas, what we do when they get right here? We just open up like a little whore and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I call it the slut out move because, like, they're going to fuck you tonight. Like, they would be very aggressively, especially if she get on top. Oh, my God. I know I'm projecting right now, but that's some shit that happened to me. <laughs> I'm real, like, I said, uh, my girl got on top, was riding the shit out of me. I sounded like blank man and shit. I was like, eh, 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 eh. Like, why the fuck are my feet shuffling? Like, my feet was shuffling. I was gripping the sheets and shit, beaching too, too light skin. <laughs> oh, my God, man, it's crazy. Any of y'all got, like, crazy family members? I think everybody has a crazy family member. Like, I got a wild-ass auntie, and I, I think she's that way because she lived to be 101 years old, and that's not an uh, easy task when you black. <laughs> and she lived to be 101, so I think she was just tired of life or tired of living, so everything was pissing her off. So she would just say whatever she wanted to, whenever, wherever, it didn't matter. Like, we would be in church out of all places. And she'd be like, Robert, come sit next to me. I'm like, oh, okay. She like, look at this congregation. She said, you see that woman right there? I'm like, yeah, that's Miss Garrett. She make all the pies and the cookies for the church. Marcy leaned back and turned around and was like, well, I used to suck her husband dick while she was out here making all the pies and the cookies for the church. I'm like, what? She like, yeah, her husband Bill is the only nigga I used to take my teeth out for. I was like, oh my God. So when she died, Everybody in the funeral was saying a bunch of stupid shit. Like, oh, Auntie Martha passed away. I know she looking down on us. I'm like, shit, that bitch looking up. She's in hell right now. <laughs> like, y'all tweet. You talking about, I was in the pff, in hell. It's so bad because, like, my uncle been up there waiting for her forever. And it's sad to know that he's in heaven and never going to see his wife again. Because she <laughs> did not make it there. She didn't. <laughs> At all. But I'm gonna leave on this, man. This is my dad. We we're talking about funerals. That's when black shit, all the skeletons come out at black funerals. So my dad uh, died in June, right? And everybody was being real phony and fake. That's when I realized my family don't fuck with each other like that because they phony and fake. I was like, all right, let's test this out. They're like, all oh, right, Rob, we're gonna come to every comedy show you have, every open mic. We're gonna support you. We're gonna support you. <laughs> right. None of these niggas in here. So I was like, let me take this a step further and put them in a family group chat just to see how funny you are. So I started a family group chat, and as soon as I started a family group chat, my uncle hit me on the side like, hey, nephew, you know I'm a private nigga, right? <laughs> it's like, who the fuck you got me in this group chat with, with all these strangers and shit? I was like, what? <laughs> He like, nah, 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 fuck all that, fuck all that. Who is that crybaby ass nigga in the group chat that's always crying like, oh, my daddy ain't shit, my daddy ain't shit. I'm like, yo, daughter, nigga, like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> I'm gonna leave on that note. My name is Ryan Mayfield, y'all been good? <laughs> Very funny, one of my
my favorites in the city. Everybody give it up for Steph Brooks, everybody. Full disclosure, I have a massive crush on Brian, okay? If I had to describe my type in one word, it's gay. <laughs> um, which is unfortunate for me. Um, and listen, the gay men, they love me, okay? But just not like that, okay? Um, so yeah, dating's, uh, the COVID fucked shit up. So dating's had to get a little, I've had to spice it up, okay? Um, so recently I was like, hey, what if I just invited a dating app guy to meet me at a show on stage? So there's one in the crowd right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's two. <laughs> okay, are we ready to have some fun tonight? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, because here's the thing. They've consented to this. They know about each other. Okay, but you didn't know about them. Uh, let's get some ground rules. Let's get some ground rules set, okay? Let me. They've agreed to be roasted tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Um, give it up for our boys. <laughs> Should we, should we identify them? You guys want to know who they are? Um, okay. Kellen, give everyone a wave. Hey. Awesome, thank you. Austin, give everyone a wave. Hello. You have a sick and dark sense of humor, okay? Um, so before we start, we're going to get the ground rules, okay? Because uh, I just need to make sure it's <laughs> this is what consent looks like, okay? <laughs> so gentlemen, if you would... Go ahead, there's three simple rules if you wouldn't mind repeating them after me. Number one, these are jokes. These are jokes. Right. <laughs> Number two, jokes are funny. Very good. Uh, number three is an easy one. I will not murder Steph after the show. <laughs> Even if I don't like her jokes. Even if I don't like her jokes. <laughs> because I can take a joke. <laughs> and negative emotions are no excuse for murder. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's give him a hand, okay? Awesome. Awesome. These poor guys. I'm, s I'm not sorry. <laughs> All right. So first we have Kellen. I'm going to go ahead. Again, they've consented to being roasted. Um, Kellen is a Florida man, which explains why he smells like bath salts. Uh, Kellen lists his professional title as badass at bounty hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Under that, it says he's liberal. <laughs> okay, Kellen. Um, Kellen looks like a homeschooled Kurt Cobain. <laughs> <laughs> Kellen notes a life goal of his is to open a bar slash laundromat. <laughs> And translated for the ladies, that's, this reads, I like being poor. <laughs> <laughs> there are three cats on Kellen's profile, and he's still out tonight. Kellen, have you considered leaving some pussy for the rest of us? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's what I've got for Kellen. Please give it up for Kellen. Thank you, thank you. We're not quite done, but we are going to move on to Austin, okay? Um, Austin plays in a band, and much like Megan Trainer, he's all about that bass. The good news is he'll be very comfortable playing backup for Kellen. <laughs> <laughs> that was, it was mean. <laughs> it's a roast. Um, I don't know these people. <laughs> Austin is a Gemini, so I asked my astrologist if we are a match. She read the stars and she said, Gemini? Only if he's an uncut job. <laughs> Austin, are you uncut? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer that. Uh, I'm sorry. When I asked Austin for coffee, he said sure. Even though on his profile, he very clearly states he doesn't drink coffee. I sure hope the coffee is stronger than Austin's backbone. <laughs> I'm a jerk. Um, Austin looks like the love child of Ozzy Osbourne and Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> That's particularly mean considering we don't know each other. Remember rule number two. <laughs> jokes are funny. No, sorry, these are jokes. <laughs> I don't know if number two is true. Um, and finally, Austin has a lot of tattoos on his arms, which is a really cool way of covering up a lot of mistakes. 
Austin, if I pay for it, will you get my name tattooed tonight? <laughs> That's a yes! He <laughs> <laughs> called my bluff. Um, excellent, boys. This is the, the roast part is over. Can we please hear it for our very kind volunteers? Um, now, the next piece that I've got here is a little bit of a fact check because if there's one thing I know about guys, it's that they're liars. Um, <laughs> hashtag not all men. Um, all right, so to confirm that these guys aren't liars, step number one is we're gonna do an age check. So boys, if you wouldn't mind pulling out your IDs, <laughs> and please have a neighbor confirm the year that it says. Kellen should be born roughly in the year 93. Austin should be roughly born in the year 98. If someone could Thumbs up here? Yep. Is he who he says he is? Well, it says 93 on here. Perfect. Excellent. <laughs> Kellen, you've passed test number one. Austin? 89. I'm, listen, I did first grade twice, which they should have had me tested, yeah, okay? 89. 89, all right! The, uh, these ones so far, not liars. Um, and now, Vanna White, Vanna White was here. Vanna White? Uh, I'm just kidding, it's Brian. <laughs> and then if my, if my good sirs could come to the stage, we have one more fact check that we're gonna run through. Please give them a hand, okay? All right, so um, you're gonna hold this. We're gonna check their height because that's the information I have on the apps, okay? Who do we wanna start with? Who do we wanna start with? All right, Austin, Austin, all right. I'm gonna stand on the chair so I can see. I've never used this. And Vanna White here is gonna measure from the bottom. If, if Austin is stating the truth, Austin should be a flat six foot, which is the dream for most men. Okay, you got it there? Oh my god. Do you need a sister? <laughs> Kellen, step in, man. Women helping women, we love to see it. Sorry, what? <laughs> All right, what do we got here? 70 inches. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> 72 is 26, so roughly 5'11. Oh, shit. Yeah, so 5'11. I would argue this man is 5'11. Oh, you know what? I would round up too. We'll give it to you, okay? <laughs> All right, we're gonna give it to him, okay? Round of applause. I'm the jerk, don't forget. All right, and now for Kellen, which, Austin, we might need your help because Vanna here is drunk. All right, what do you see? I can't see it now. Um, 69. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! What does that translate to? Oh, also. And Kellen states he's 5'10", ladies and gentlemen. An honest man. And as close as we can expect for a man in the year 2023. Can you please give these boys a round of applause? Thank you so much. I am so sorry. Get off my stage. Thank you so much. My name is Jeff Brooks. Thank you so much. Italian half black, but that all that means for me is that everywhere I go, some random person speaks Spanish to me. <laughs> there ain't no problem with that, except that I don't know any Spanish, so <laughs> there are clearly some complications. Like, I was living in Florida, and this guy came up to me, he was like, como esta? <laughs> and I just stared at him, because I didn't know what he said. And I could tell he got frustrated through his mannerisms, they got more aggressive, he was like, como estas? And in my head, I was like, subtitles don't exist. But I told him, I was like, what do you want from me? He was like a chalupa. And <laughs> I remembered I was working at Taco Bell at the moment, but I was, I was like, why wouldn't you open them with that? This is made to order, bitch, what do you mean? Like, come on, we got, we got orders to make. Like, come on. 
And then uh, later that summer, I ended up going back home to Western Pennsylvania because that's where I'm originally from. From and yeah, I went to hey, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, look at the straightest fucking face because it's ass. Like it's so terrible. Where are you from? What part? Well, I have family in the area. I'm from here originally. <laughs> oh, so why the fuck did you say yeah then? I was like, yeah, we in the building. No, we're not. We're not. It's <laughs> No, it's ass though. I appreciate that though. Um, I um, so basically, I went back to Western Pennsylvania, and I was playing basketball in a local neighborhood, and I wanted to go say hi to my cousin's mom because I grew up with them and I was really close uh, growing up. And I uh, got to her house. I was playing basketball. He said, "Like, doof, doof. hey, Miss Kiana." She was like, "Hey," I, she noticed I was tired because I was balling on them hoes like Jordan, you know, put my nuts on her head and stuff like that. And <laughs> there's cap, but like. <laughs> She was like, you want some water? I was like, yeah. She was like, mi casa, su casa. So I just left. <laughs> so I didn't know what she said. <laughs> and she, she was like, Joey, what's going on? I'm like, you kicked me out. She knew immediately. She was like, no. Mi casa, su casa means my house is your house. So I was like, oh. Well, you get out. <laughs> I don't like having company after five, miss. That's not how I roll. <laughs> I got an electric bill. If you don't want to pitch in, you got to go. Sorry. <laughs> I know, it's not very diverse in Western Pennsylvania, though. That's why I left, and now I'm currently trying to get back out. But <laughs> especially where I'm from, like, I, I stick out everywhere I go. Like, I went to a GameStop, and as soon as I went in, the clerk got, like, I don't know, acted all excited. As soon as I went in, he was like, yo. Yo, you look exotic. <laughs> what are you, Samoan? <laughs> Puerto Rican? You be flipping them burritos, my guy, that's what you do. I was like, first of all, you, uh, you don't flip them, you wrap them. But, um, <laughs> Kirk's your Taco Bell, but like, I was like, you wrap them. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm half black. He was like, oh, all the excitement left. He was like, oh, you must be here for that new basketball game. Let me grab that for you. I was like, hold up, man. For one, that's kind of racist. Two, you didn't let me finish. I'm half white. Let me get that school shooter simulator. Give it up. <laughs> get that shit the fuck up. Let me get that EA Sports Columbine 99. I'm not thinking of playing out here. I want the pew sound effects with it too. There's a pew pew with the red dots. I want all. <laughs> I know I, I, I'm a big fan of astrology. I don't know if you guys like astrology. Yeah, <laughs> gang. I you know I found out that you get two completely different reactions from men and women when you talk about astrology. Like I was talking to this girl and I was like, hey, what's your astrological sign? And she was like, well, my birthday is September 21st. That means I'm a Virgo. And I'm a, it's on the cusp, so I'm a Libra, and my rising is Leo, so it's a little bit of a mixture. I asked my stepdad, I was like, yo, what's your sign? He was like, Carib. I was like, okay. <laughs> so that's the wrong sign, man. I don't mean to. <laughs> I ain't about none of that. Like, <laughs> I tell jokes. I don't want none of them problems. <laughs> I know, I was, uh, a lot of people don't understand how ast astro astrology really works either. Like, I was talking to this girl, like, because a lot of people like to say, I'm this sign, so I have these traits, and it, that's not how it works. Like, I was talking to this girl, and she was like, well, my sun is Aries, so that means I can be, I can be dominant. My moon is Libra, so I can be kind of needy, but my, uh, my rising is Gemini, so I can be either or on any day. I was like, you need to stop sign because you sound problematic. That's not, <laughs> <laughs> that ain't how that shit works. <laughs> 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 I, uh, I'm a photographer, freelancer. I'm not official with it, but I will be, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> 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 I, I'm going to act like I am. <laughs> I, uh, I, um, I'll give you guys a secret, though. Like, uh, whenever photographers give you turnaround times, it can always be a little bit quicker. Like, I, uh, I, was, I did this event on a Sunday. I told this, the, the woman who, who booked me, I was like, uh, it'll be good by Thursday. She hit me up Wednesday. She was like, hey, we still good for tomorrow? I was like, yeah, I'm editing these videos right now. I was playing Fortnite. I wasn't doing that shit. 
she got them on time, but like she could have got that shit like Tuesday. I was, I was busy emoting on motherfuckers. It was like, it was like <laughs> live my life. But I was also a, a, I was a school photographer at one point, and none of the kids they ever they never wanted to listen to us. We had to uh, pose the children, so toes had to be uh, toes and shoulder had to be square with the light in their face. You know, they had to on the camera they had to put on a little smile for the mom and shit. Like, mm, you know. <laughs> One of the kids, I was like, I tried to pose him. He just, he came up like this. <laughs> I was like, this ain't Instagram, man. Like, this is, <laughs> this is for your mom. Like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a Christian school. I did, I was at a Christian school, and this kid came up, and he just, he just posed like this. <laughs> Sixth grade, by the way. I was like, can you bring, I wasn't even gonna try with him. I, I knew what it was. I was like, can you bring your chin down a little bit? <laughs> He's like, I'm too hard to pose like that. And I was like, hard? I just saw you playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, you're not, <laughs> I should banish your ass to the shadow realm for saying that bullshit. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. That's my time. Go, Bo. <laughs> for Peter Bonello. My dad has the biggest dick I've ever seen. My entire life, my dad has just walked around the house naked. Like, as soon as the sun went down, he'd be naked. Like, if you gave me a pencil and put a gun to my head, I could draw it. Well. And I don't need the gun to be honest. <laughs> but every time I say that, guys will come up to me and be like, yeah, but dude, everyone's dad's dick looks bigger when you're younger. I'm like, yeah, that's true, but I saw that shit last week. Still holds up. But you know, that's why I never understood when I was younger, kids saying that they were uncomfortable in men's locker rooms. They'd just be like, it's just a bunch of old, naked guys walking around. I'm like, yeah, pretty homey, right? <laughs> you know. Guys, are you dating? No? All right, fuck myself. <laughs> you know, well, I feel like, you know, everyone has this ideal version of, like, the girl in their dreams, you know? And you don't end up at make matching that ideal version every time. Of course, like, parts of it, but never the whole thing. You know, like, I was seeing a girl one time, and, um, you know, like, she was very funny. She was pretty. The sex was great. The only bad part was she hated me. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you guys? Where you love someone, and then they hate you? See, the frustrating thing about that was, I loved her, and she hated me. <laughs> After a while, it just felt like I was dating dairy, you know? I'd eat it, then two hours later, I'd just be in a fight for my life. <laughs> Thank you, I heard that, that was pretty funny, I appreciate that. A laugh would have been better, but, you know, we can't all be beggars and choosers, whatever. But you know, but now I'm dating, now I'm dating. And the other day I hooked up with a girl and she was saying, uh, because of the antidepressant she's on, she has a hard time coming. And I was like, that is so sad <laughs> to hear that every girl I've been with is on antidepressants? <laughs> what the fuck? They never even mentioned they were sad. Such bullshit. But I, had a th uh, I ate ass the other day. That usually gets a clap or, you know, an applause, something. All right, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> but, you know, like afterwards, you know, she was like, would you ever want me to eat your ass? And I was like, no, I want to see you again. <laughs> Does that make sense? You know, like having a girl eat my ass feels like something I would do, like a girl I hate or someone I'm about to break up with, you know? Because, like, even if she told me, 
She loved it. I would never believe her. <laughs> She'd just be asleep next to me, and I'd look over like, I hope she's okay. <laughs> you know. I don't understand the confidence of these men having their asses eaten by women. It's crazy to me. I'm not saying I have a gross ass. I'm saying we all have gross asses. <laughs> It's insane. But I had a threesome the other day. That got a little more applause. Thank you. You know, I appreciate that. And it was fun. It was a good time. It was a good time. But um, I do think I prefer sex without a guy going, let's go, Pete. <laughs> Didn't really know what to say to that. I was just like, thanks. You too, Omar. <laughs> But every time I tell that joke, I see guys' eyes light up. They're like, threesome? Hell yeah. And then I see another guy was involved. They're like, no, no, that's a different thing. That's a different thing. That's gay. You guys didn't really like that one as much. <laughs> But that's okay, guys. Who's drinking in here? Yeah. And who's drunk? <laughs> good, good. I, told, I said that I said the other day, and someone was like, all the time. And I was like, all right, slow down, slow down. Because like, I drink a lot. I like to drink a lot. You know, I've just been in the back room, back of this room, just drinking all night. You know, like, I like Coors. I don't know if you've seen this, but Coors just had a contest where they hid the keys to a 77 Trans Am somewhere in Colorado. Yeah. And whoever finds the keys to that car wins the car and a year's worth of beer. I just think it's really cool they're giving a car and a year's worth of beer to someone who definitely has a DUI. <laughs> but that's why I like Coors, because they take risks. <laughs> because they could have given away anything, like a year's worth of Ubers. <laughs> <laughs> But they're like, no, fuck it, muscle car. <laughs> But like, I just feel bad for who's ever married to the winner. Because like the winner, you want a car and years of the beer, but they lost the husband. <laughs> If you were smart, you would have gotten that. Guys, the other weekend I was aggressively hit on by a guy. But he knew how to catch my attention. He did the, the right thing to say. The first thing he said was like, I really like your bulls hat. And I was just like, really? <laughs> Stop it. It's old school. It's a three-peat hat. <laughs> They don't really make them anymore. And then he just continued asking me questions and just like kind of hitting on me. And I started to realize what was going on. Started to pull back a little bit, and then he said, and then he just leaned in and goes, I'm a trash can. Brian, what do I say to that? <laughs> what should have I said to that? I said nothing, you know? And I was just like, I'm sorry, I'm not into guys. And he was like, me neither. And I was like, if you're not into guys, who is sucking my dick? Guys, uh, I have an older brother. Cool. <laughs> no, but because of that, I feel like I always have younger brother tendencies, you know? Like, I always feel like a little brother, you know? Like, I'm always unsure of myself. I'm constantly asking questions. Everyone calls me little cunt. <laughs> you know, I think I'm going to open up with you guys a little bit. We've gotten pretty close. Yeah. I'm bald. Oh. Wow, that hurt. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Hey, Jamal, can we get him out of here right now? That was a really hurtful O. Oh. That sucked. You know, you're not supposed to laugh that hard. These are the one jokes where I'm like, you know, a giggle is fine. But the other day, a bald man asked me how old I was. I said 28. He said, wow. I had way more hair at that age. 
I was just like, dude, um, is my cheeseburger ready? <laughs> but dude, I bought on the dating apps, which was a lot of fun. I matched with a girl the other day. I was like, hey, cute dogs. You know what she said? Why are you bald? <laughs> I was like, why are you a bitch? Also, are you free Thursday? <laughs> you know, but like, dude, I'm bald with a baby face and can grow facial hair. Like, dude, how do I look 14 and 40 at the exact same time? <laughs> like, a, like, I look like I just finished Legos and I'm about to go to a union job. <laughs> I look like I wind down with cartoons and scotch. <laughs> I look like if Voldemort skateboarded. All right, thank you. That's my time for you. We're not Give it up for this desk comedian. He's one of my favorites in the city. Give it up for Brian Connors. This is pretty cool. We're all getting tapes tonight. You know, it's a pretty big event, so I had to prepare. Because as we all know, my stand-up comedy is a lot like anal sex. If I'm unprepared, I'm still going to have a great time, but you might experience a little shit. <laughs> Do we have any uh, Catholic people in the audience? Woo! Any religious folk? How many of you eat ass now? Because <laughs> I'm always shocked when a Catholic person says that they don't eat ass. What part of Jesus Christ do you think you're eating every Sunday? <laughs> Usually when we have another living thing, we know the specific part. Chicken thighs, frog legs, ox tail, body of Christ? Seems a little too vague not to be the Messiah's booty cheeks, okay? You really think Jesus invited 12 men to dinner, said this is my body given up for you, and wasn't face down, ass up, waiting to get tongue fucked? I don't think so! When I tell the Catholic Church to suck my ass, I am not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just trying to live the gospel. Because the whole sacrament of the Eucharist was literally based on a rim job. Jesus Christ was a pig bottom. Wake up, open your eyes. He had three holes for a reason. <laughs> I love a good Catholic joke almost as much as I love doggy style. <laughs> Nothing I enjoy more than getting on all fours and begging for a stick. <laughs> I never understood pup play, though. You know, that's when they wear the leather dog masks. But then I realized homosexuals don't go to heaven. But all dogs do! <laughs> So if God is not going to accept me as his child, I am not above pretending to be one of his bitches. <laughs> I was always told I'd be a great priest. That's an old lady's way of saying, I'm going to tell you you're gay without telling you you're gay. <laughs> um, I used to think this was kind of a homophobic, you know, way to suppress my sexuality. But then I realized I'd be a great priest. I love monologuing in front of an audience. <laughs> gay people in general would make great priests. Drinking wine, gay. Worshiping a man and standing his mother, gay. <laughs> Acquiring all the gossip in your friend group under the ruse of confession, gay. <laughs> if you want a gay priest though, you're never gonna get it because the church is just never gonna come around. We really thought we had it with Pope Francis. You know, my mom said he was the good pope. My nanny said he's the one who's gonna bring us into the 21st century. But saying Pope Francis is a good pope is like saying the Zootopia bunny is a good police officer. <laughs> the position is inherently evil. <laughs> but that's why gay people would make great priests. We love to do bad things and then be like, entering my villain era. <laughs> Speaking of villains, have you guys had those Fairlife protein shakes? You know, they sell in Target. <laughs> I love them, but allegedly, Fairlife beats their cows. <laughs> so now I'm sexually identifying as a Fairlife cow because if you abuse me in bed, I'm gonna milk so hard. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I'm really into men. Um, specifically, a strict top. That's a guy who only gives it. 
It's what a sports fan might call a designated hitter. <laughs> I am a strict bottom. I only take it. It's what a sports fan would just call a faggot. <laughs> I am a faggot, but I've always wanted to be an actor. <laughs> Considering, though, I couldn't convince one person I was a heterosexual growing up, I don't know how well I do, you know? Every time I thought I was given straight male, I was given straight fail. Any time I thought I was given mask, I was giving mascara. <laughs> and any time I thought I was giving an Oscar-worthy performance, I was just really serving that guy who you know is hosting the Oscar party with mini wieners. <laughs> I really tried to fit in with the straight guys. You know, I tried to get into what they were into. I kid you not, I had index cards with porn stars on them. You were in, on the bus studying your European history IDs. I was in the back going, okay, Lisa Ann, Tori Black, Riley Reed. But once you mix up Alexis, Texas, and Hannah Montana, <laughs> there's no going back. The jig is up. Every time I would do something to get in with the straight boys, you know, I would do something to undermine myself. Um, in the sixth grade, I made the basketball team I thought I was in. But then before the first practice, something happened. Um, for context, uh, growing up, my grandma used to put food coloring in all our food, you know, to make things fun. Uh, green eggs, purple pancakes, the possibilities were endless. Uh, so the few days before basketball practice, the most popular boys in school come up to me in the cafeteria. They say, Brian, do you like blue waffles? And for anyone who doesn't know, blue waffles was slang for a diseased vagina. And little old Brian goes, I love blue waffles. Oh my God, especially my grandma's blue waffles. My grandma's blue waffles are the most delicious in the world. I eat my grandma's blue waffles every time we have a sleepover. <laughs> uh, suffice it to say that first back to ball practice did not go well. I was good enough to make the team. I was not good enough to overcome the rumors that I was munching my grandma's box. <laughs> but at least they thought I was into women. <laughs> Maybe I can be an actor. <laughs> Uh, pretending to be straight. How delusional is that? <laughs> but I'm pretty delusional, you know? I am so delusional that I think I sound amazing whenever I sing I Have Nothing by Whitney Houston at karaoke night. <laughs> the only time I should ever be saying the words I have nothing is when I'm leaving the STI clinic. <laughs> I'm also delusional enough to think that I can leave an STI clinic having nothing. Yeah, because I'm kind of a slut. <laughs> um, I lied, though. I don't think I'm delusional that I'm a good singer. I, she's a singer, guys. You know, I was in choir. Um, and I actually wrote a song recently. Did anyone get a weird gift over Christmas? No? Well, my dad got me lingerie. <laughs> yeah, did not think my patriarch was gonna gift me lacy underwear. <laughs> and it's like, if we're opening this door, let's stop shopping at Shine and get me some Victoria's Secret. Like, what am I, your wife? Like, let's act like you love me. <laughs> um, but you know, um, even though the gift was a surprise, my dad gave me the best gift of all, which was comedy material. So that's why my debut single goes out to you, dad. Guys, this is Daddy Panties. <laughs> Two, three. Over the holidays, my dad got me a sexy thong. You might be thinking that it's weird. Oh, hey, that's kind of wrong. But I don't think it's strange, because I would buy them for myself. It was a sweet gesture, kind of like Buddy the Elf, who got his daddy panties. Like the panties that my father gave me. I'm going to go out and snag a daddy. And the panties that my father gave me. Mm, 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 mm. Most fathers get their sons something like a baseball glove. But my dad's got a different way of showing me his love. Maybe even a wooden bat or Yankees cap to match. But my dad knows I need different tools when I want to play catch. I need my daddy panties. They're the panties that my father gave me. I'm gonna go out and shag a daddy. And the panties that my father gave me, mm, 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 ooh. 
So next time you see me making out with an older man and you think to yourself, his relationship with his dad must be in the can. <laughs> I'll tell you to stop hating because underneath my jeans is a gift from my dad showing what fatherhood really means. <laughs> Supporting your gay son. <laughs> Even if he's kind of a slut. <laughs> And wearing daddy panties. They're the panties that my father gave me. I'm gonna go out and fuck your daddy. They're the panties that my father gave me. Everybody now, daddy panties. They're the panties that my father gave me. I'm gonna go out and fuck your daddy. They're the panties that my father gave me. Uh, 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 daddy panties. Thank you guys. I'm Brian Connors. Have a great rest of your night. Dan Garcia! Uh, by a quick round of applause, anyone gain a few pounds over the last couple years? You guys gain a few pounds? <laughs> what I'm hearing is, this audience is thick, all right. And thick's not, it, being thick isn't bad, you know? It's, it's in right now. Everyone's still clapping cheeks, they're just clapping a little louder, right? <laughs> I gained a little too much weight. My friends weren't nice about it growing up, you know? Uh, they'd say things like, ha ha, Dan, you sweat when you eat. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker, I sweat when I order, okay? <laughs> Don't mess with me. People are a lot nicer now. They're telling me if I run, I can get a runner's high, right? I'm like, okay, I can fight this addiction with addiction, right? <laughs> so now I get up early every morning and I do cocaine. <laughs> I was never a morning person, but now I'm like, the best part of waking up. Fresh Colombian, y'all, that's right. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, I just turned 40, I just turned 40 a few months ago, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, I'm dying, I'm dying. Uh, and I gotta take better care of my health, so I got a Fitbit. But what I found out is that if you just get a Fitbit and make no other life changes, it's not a weight loss plan, you know? You've got a judgy watch. <laughs> and I work from home, I'm a software engineer. Uh, the other day Fitbit said, hey, congratulations, Dan, on your afternoon walk, 27 steps. <laughs> That's passive aggressive. <laughs> of my back. Uh, I, I, you gotta get a Fitbit for the right reasons. I didn't, I, I was smoking weed late at night and I thought I was having heart palpitations, right? And some people would call the doctor, not me. I got an Amazon.com. And, and $150 later, I found out a Fitbit doesn't track that. <laughs> I think what I wanted was a fucking life alert, really. Is what I, <laughs> I blew it. <laughs> I blew it. Uh, what do you guys like, think of this outfit? You guys like the look? Okay. Nice up front, quiet in the back. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I like the look too, but let's be real. I look like a community college art teacher, right? <laughs> I'm a fucking accountant for the Grateful Dead over here. I'm really <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> fucking up. Uh, I live in Lakeview, which is the north side, and there's been a lot of armed robberies lately, and I was worried going home late at night, the suit jacket would make me a target, you know? And then I looked in the mirror, and I was like, nah. <laughs> If I don't brush my hair enough, it looks like someone already got to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I should probably dry clean this thing. I don't know. I'm used to going to a wedding and getting pasta on it and having to dry clean it. But that's me. Um, you guys using the Citizen app? Anyone? You guys know the Citizen app? Yeah, it's a fun way to be afraid at home, right? <laughs> that's pretty good. My girl and I like to do late night snacking, going to the 7 Eleven. Uh, and this is a real alert. I looked at my phone, Citizen app said, man on Belmont chasing people with chain. <laughs> so we're like, uh, let's give it a minute, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, a half hour later, totally clear. Thanks, thanks Citizen app, thank you. Uh, I'm getting desensitized for sure. Uh, I saw on the app, a woman a mile away at the Shell station waving a gun around. And I'm like, 
She's just waving it, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna get bent out of shape over little brandishing, okay? We don't know her story. Gas is expensive. She could just be like, mm, like pumping her gas, and some guy walks by, like, hey, you should smile more. And she's like, God damn it! <laughs> it's just a good way to be left alone, really. I don't Guys say the craziest thing to women. Uh, my lady friends tell me they'll go on a first date and a guy will verbally say that he expects sex. Expects sex on the first date. That's crazy. I never expect sex. Actually, I'm surprised every time. <laughs> <laughs> it could be my wedding night and I'd be like, oh, okay, neat. <laughs> gotta work on the dirty talk. I gotta. <laughs> But as I said, I'm 40, like if I was on a good date, we end up at my place or hers, I don't expect anything, but I'll be prepared, you know? Anyone else jump into the bathroom, do a little courtesy rinse? No. <laughs> you know what, the world needs more empathy, is where like, like splish splash, put some water on it, what's it to you? You know, I think a lot of people are pulling back because you think I'm saying you're dirty. Guys, I'm not saying you're dirty, but there's what, 40 people in here? You're telling me not one of us is Linty. <laughs> Guys, you know all these girls have group chats, right? You want to be immortalized as Lint Dick? <laughs> Not a good look. Maybe this is too personal. I don't know. <laughs> Gotta stop buying am uh, underwear from Amazon.com, really. Is, that's what I'm learning. Uh, I work from home. Anybody doing the work from home yeah. thing? Yeah. All right. Yeah, a lot of it. It's kind of lonely, right? It's kind of lonely. Um, Saw the craziest thing on the news a couple years ago. This guy from CNN, Jeffrey Tubin, got caught masturbating during a Zoom meeting. You guys see that's that's crazy. It blew my mind. I'm like, how does this happen? Did he get confused? What was the meeting about? Workloads? It's <laughs> 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 gross. It's gross. Oh my god. I don't see if some if I had a coworker masturbate in front of me during a Zoom meeting, that job could never control me ever again, you know? <laughs> my boss would be like, Dan, can you explain why you're an hour late? And I'm like, I don't know, can you explain why I've seen Jeff's dick? <laughs> Curves a little at the end. You know what? I feel like I'm upset. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> PTSD. Uh, I could never get caught masturbating during a work meeting because I'm always too busy looking at my little window. Trying to figure out if I look high. <laughs> <laughs> the squinting and the tie-dye, not helping, guys. I'll tell you. <laughs> not helping. Anybody get high at work? Anybody do it? Yeah, what, will, you, will you tell me what you do? When I'm high at work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I go into the break room and I steal snacks. Uh -huh. And then I sit at my desk and put my headphones in and I go at it. Oh my God, so I love, <laughs> I asked her what she does. She gets high work, she's like, well I go, she didn't tell me what, she didn't say the profession. She's like, I go to the break room. <laughs> we don't know what she does. Go to the break room, get some snacks. Go to my desk, listen to some music. I'm vibing, baby. <laughs> vibing. Advertising, all right. I was gonna go with corporate accounting, but yeah, advertising. You know who doesn't get high? CTA bus drivers. <laughs> Way too aggressive, those guys. Way too aggressive. Oh, holy shit. Oh, my God. Uh, you know what? I really like uh, this city. You guys have been really good about wearing masks to protect themselves each other during the pandemic. But how about condoms? You guys using condoms? Oh, no. Wait a minute. What am I saying? This is a raw dog crowd. Have I ever seen one? I fucked up. I should come out here first thing. Like, where are my raw doggies at? Let's hear it. <laughs> Hot tip, guys, you want to get laid after the show, go out on Clark Street and yell, I don't use condoms! And then bark. And bark. <laughs> My friends that don't use condoms have the dumbest reasons. You know, they're like, oh, Dan, I don't use condoms, they don't fit right. I'm like, bro, you know what doesn't fit right? You at a parent-teacher conference, okay? <laughs> use condoms, please. I will admit, though, I don't understand condom technology, rib for her pleasure, that's weird, right? They market condoms to men as it feels like you're wearing nothing. They market condoms to women as it feels like not a penis. <laughs> <laughs> Rib latex, yeah, because we've all been fucking like, you know what this could use? Grip. <laughs> <laughs> That's my time. Thanks a lot, guys. Give up your hands.